Okay, welcome to this little guide for moving a player object using the new Unity input system. So we've just got a little demo here. We've got our little player character, this little yellow head with the balls. And we can see we can move around using W, A, S, and D. And what is also cool about the new input system, if I connect up a controller, it is already coded in. So I only have to do this sort of once. And because I've used the character controller, we can move across and when we hit a wall that's too high, but if it gets one that it's allowed to step up onto, that can still work. And this is all due to basically the character controller we've included and the other details. So we're just going to turn this off and have a quick look at some of these settings. So in our player, we've got our inputs and we've got our character controller. And most importantly, we've got our step offset. So that's how high it can jump up to. And a slope limit for what sort of angles the character can walk up. So this is going to give us a really easy, easy and nice way to be able to get our character moving and make it customizable and accessible. So we can modify it at later points. Okay, so what we've got here is a player character, which is a prefab with our player input and it's got just those default actions pre-made move look and fire and so we can see those input actions are in that input actions folder we've also got that player as a prefab and in the windows package manager we've gone and actually added already added in the input system so we've got all the core components we need now we just need to write a script to carry that out so, a few ways we can do it, we can go into the player and we're going to attach our script to the player. So we could go and add it as a component here by typing new script. But I'm going to do it a slight different way. So I'm going to go into my scripts folder because I want to keep things nice and neatly set out. I'm going to go create C sharp script and I've got excited here. So I've just gone and pressed and called it new behavior script. And I realized, hey, I probably don't want it that. I want to maybe call it player movement. And now at the moment, this player movement script exists, but it's not linked up to the player. So I could add it by typing in player. Oh, but player movement's not here. Is there new behavior? No, there's no new behavior script. Okay, I want to drag it on. But no, nope, it's going to give me an error. And the reason for that is the name it hasn't been able to compile it and the reason being hey, there's an error and the error is the name of this file is not the name of the class so to solve that we're just going to go into visual studio code and i'm going to change the name of this class from new behavior script to player player movement and I can just tab back and we can see it went through and compiled and I can now either go onto the player and I can actually see I've got this player movement here or I can just drag it on and we see it's added it as a script. Now Unity has a feature built in called the character controller and that's another component. This character controller has a whole bunch of really cool features. So we're just gonna add the built-in one. We can customize and build one, our own, but we're just gonna use this default one. So it's got the slope limit. So as far as the slope limit determines is if we go back to the scene, the angle that this character can move up. And if we go back onto our player prefab, the step offset, so how many, Unit, how much of a unit it can move up. So the higher that number, the bigger the step that the character can move up by default. This is a really good character controller for 3D sort of first person and third person games. If you want to deal with a lot of more complex physics, you're probably gonna to wanna to build your own using rigid bodies. Okay, so we've got that there. Now let's just go back to our player movement script and we're going to set this up. 
First thing we want to do is because we're using the new input system, we, we need to import that package. Unity engine dot input system. That will mean that when we write our code, that's accessible. So we need to set up some player variables. And first thing we're going to do is set up the character controller. And we've got a few keywords that we're going to use when we set up variables. Private means it only is visible inside this code, inside this one class. Public means it can be accessed anywhere. Generally, it's a better idea to keep things private where possible. So we need to have a character controller. And for private variables in C Sharp, the practice is to use Pascal case, or a form of Pascal case, but we're going to prefix every private variable with an underscore. And then that next word will start with a lowercase letter. And then the second word and third and so on will start with a capital. So we've got our private character controller. So that's going to handle our movement. We also want a float, private float for speed. And we're going to set this as a default to five. And we put an F on the end to basically tell us that it's not a double, like a normal decimal point number, it's floating point. And underscore speed. And finally, we need another private variable to be able to store a vector two for player movement input. Now, what this vector two is, is a 2D vector, so it works on a 2D plane. So if we think with the mouse moving up and down, that's on the y-axis, and left and right, that's on the x-axis. So that's our 2D vector. Now, when we start, we want to link up the character controller that is on our program. So we're going to get that variable, is assigned to get component, these little square brackets, and inside these square brackets goes the type of information we want to get, the type of component. We want to get this character controller. Now what this does behind the scenes is if we switch back into Unity, we'll select our player. So our player movement script is attached to the player, and we can see its components. It gets this character controller. We can actually force the program to require it. So how we do that is before the class, we give an instruction called require component type of character controller. So that says that the object that the script is attached to, it must have a character controller for it to work. If it doesn't exist, it's not going to run. Okay, so we've got a character controller that's running. Let's put a little debug.log message. This is going to print out player created. So this start method is run whenever this object is first created. And we're just going to print out the character message player created. Let's go and run this. So we're just doing a lot of little iterations small little changes, getting things set up. And we can so see it's printed out the message player created, but we haven't told it to actually do any movement yet. So we're going to go back to Visual Studio. Now we need to basically go and handle our movement. So we need to detect the movement that the player has inputted. So we're going to make a method called void on move. Now how we get the name of this is it's pretty sort of written part of the input system. So if we switch back to here, we've got the send messages and this means we can create a function called on move and whenever we press one of the move keys it will run that function. So it triggers an event. How we know which ones we can have We've got move, look, fire. So every action 
we can just put the word on in front of it and that's what we're able to access if it's a button we don't need to give it any parameters inside the function it's a look we get need to give it a value and that value will have the type of vector 2 same with move takes a value input value and it's of type vector 2 so that means inside these brackets we need to give it an input value I'm just gonna call it IV when there are parameters for functions in C sharp we can just use Pascal case not Pascal camel case just lower case and we need to take that input and assign it to this player input or player movement input variable so we're just going to include that down here is assigned to IV dot get and we want to get the vector 2 so we got that vector 2 because that's what it was asking for here let's actually just put another little debug dot log and we'll just have movement pressed so we're not actually moving the character at the moment we're just getting the values that we've put and we're going to store them so let's just go and test this and hopefully in our console it's giving us a little error saying hey the movement speed hasn't been used and if we press the movement keys it's telling us that hey it's at least detected that movement but now we need to go and move the character on the screen this will happen in our update function so I could go and write all the code all the way in here but as that gets bigger and bigger this is going to become really messy so we're going to make a separate function for void for void move player and this function will have everything that needs to happen with the move player and we're going to call that from the update function so what will happen update will be called once every frame it'll get to here and the code will jump down to this move player function so now we need to actually go through and actually move the player we've only got a 2d vector our game is in 3d so we need to convert this x and y from our player inputs into x y y being the vertical axis so like jumping and z so the x-axis basically will stay the same but the y-axis we're going to have to move that onto the z-axis so we're going to have a vector 3 for movement and it's going to be a new vector 3 and we're going to take x, y and z values now thankfully we don't want it to move on the y-axis so we're just going to put 0.0 so we don't because we don't want it to move up and down vertically now vector 3 we've got this movement player movement input and we can get dot x to get the x value and dot y for our z value and now we actually need to tell the character controller to move it so we're going to get the character controller dot simple move we use simple move because it actually incorporates some gravity so if the character falls off an edge we can move down and we're going to move it times that movement variable times speed now what we can see here we've got another local variable called movement and a field which has underscore so the fields are the ones which are part of the class the local variables are to do with inside a function or a method so let's save this and let's hope that it works. Probably not going to because we've probably forgotten something. So we're looking down in this little corner in the bottom left. So I can see my character is moving and we can see it's he's able to move up those little edges and up that one and falls off and when he falls off an edge the gravity Okay, so we're just going to jump back 
have a look on this. We'll go back onto our player and let's change his slope limit to only being 10 degrees. And let's see what happens. So we're gonna go back. Oh, we now can't move up that. What's nice about Unity is that we can actually go and modify this as the program is running to test out what values we want. Okay, so that is a quick guide. I guess not so quick, it's about 15 minutes for using player movement using the new input system.